Yo, 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 it's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor of Alonzo Hall, and I've returned today with another ADH Wealth Solution. Today, we'll begin to discuss fulfilling all of your financial needs. To contribute to channel growth, the links are in the description. To schedule an appointment of your own, or to purchase life insurance directly up to $1 million with no medical exam and an instant decision, my information is in the description. Lastly, make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. And now, here's our next feature. Salute, 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 salute. It's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor, Alonzo Hall. And I've returned today to whap and tap on your head with another ADH Wealth Solution. Today's article is entitled Biggest Winners and Losers from the Fed's Interest Rate Decision. Before we go in, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit that like Drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth, to purchase life insurance directly up to $1 million with an instant decision or no medical exam, or to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description. As we proceed to give you what you need, Really quick, this is from Bankrate, and if you don't know, the Federal Reserve, or the prime rate, which is the interest rate that has to do with things like mortgages and loan balances, <clears throat> changes every Wednesday. Today happens to be Wednesday, January 26, 2022, which is the exact same date as this article. Now, the prime rate changes at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, Every Wednesday. It doesn't always change drastically, but it's discussed upon. And you'll understand that further in this article. So, the Federal Reserve announced that it's keeping interest rates steady following its January 5th, excuse me, January 25th and 26th meeting, leaving the federal funds rate at a range of 0 to 0.25%. But, Despite the inaction in rates for now, Fed watchers are expecting the central bank to hike rates a number of times in 2022, with a high probability that it does so at its next meeting in March. The Fed's move was widely expected, and it comes as inflation runs hot in the U.S. economy. Thanks to a strong bounce back, supply chain issues, and trillions in fiscal stimulus, while Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that the bank is maintaining its low interest rates for now, the Fed will continue with its accelerated taper of bond purchases, which was announced in December. This move reduces liquidity in the financial system more quickly than previously indicated, and if the Fed sticks to that pace, it will eliminate its bond purchases in March. Many Fed watchers have been concerned that if the central bank keeps its foot on the gas too long, it could exacerbate and maybe even entrench already high inflation. And <clears throat> for now, however, the bond market doesn't seem to be pricing in a huge incremental rise in inflation. After soaring in the first few months of 2021, U.S. 10-year Treasury yields dipped before settling in just above where they peaked in March of last year. As the Fed proceeds with its tapering but continues to sit tight on rates, here are the winners and losers from the latest decision. 1. Mortgages. While the federal funds rate doesn't really impact mortgage rates, which depend largely on the 10-year treasury yield, they're often moving the same way for similar reasons. The Fed has been a huge buyer of mortgage-backed securities. 
helping to steady that market and keep mortgage rate lo- rates low. But it's scaling back those purchases more quickly in the near term. Still, the 10-year Treasury yield has zoomed higher in recent weeks as the market prices an expectation of the Fed raising rates. Mortgage rates have jumped since the beginning of the year, at one time up one half percentage point since late December levels, says Greg McBride, bank rates chief financial analyst. There will be spurts toward higher rates during the year as the Fed raises rates and starts letting some of their bond portfolio mature. But there will also be periods where rates pull back due to economic or geopolitical concerns. Despite the move higher, the current environment is still attractive if you're looking to get a mortgage or you're able to refinance an existing mortgage. Demand for mortgages has surged since the start of the pandemic as low rates have made them more attractive. But now may be the time to act before rates move even higher over the coming months and years. Those who are unable to take advantage of low rates, perhaps because they're underwater on their house, or maybe they've locked in a fixed rate mortgage and today's rates aren't quite low enough that it makes sense to refinance miss out here. In addition, millions of unemployed Americans are unable to gain a direct mortgage benefit from low low rates because they're unable to show an income. Two, home equity. The cost of a home equity line of credit, HELOC, remains low since HELOCs adjust relatively quickly to changes in the federal funds rate, HELOCs are typically linked to the prime rate, the interest rate that banks charge their best customers. Since rates on HELOCs remain low, those with outstanding balances on their HELOC will continue to have low interest expenses. A low rate is also beneficial for those looking to take out a HELOC. And it can be a good time to comparison shop for the best rate. If you can't take advantage of the low rates on your HELOC, for example, some HELOCs let you lock in a fixed rate on a portion of your borrowing, then they don't benefit you. And you might otherwise be paying less. Here are the pros and cons of a HELOC. Three, stock investors. A huge boon for the stock market has been the Fed's willingness to keep rates at near zero for as long as it takes for the economy to recover. Low rates are more beneficial for stocks, making them look like a more attractive investment in comparison to rates on bonds and fixed income investments such as CDs. As long as the Fed left rates low and offered unprecedented support for the market, investors kept a floor under stocks. After the initial drop in stocks, the weeks following the emergence of the coronavirus in the U.S., stocks rallied hard through 2021. But some elements of the Fed's support, such as bond purchases, are being reduced and rate increases are on the horizon. And markets have been pricing that in, with the S&P 500 in a deep slump to start the year. The cost of money is going up in 2022, so the returns won't come as easy as they did in the past 18 months or so, says McBride. Expect a bumpier ride, but most importantly, maintain your long-term perspective. Continued growth in the economy and corporate earnings are what will ultimately reward patient and disciplined investors. Don't let short-term volatility distract from your long-term objectives. Cryptocurrencies have also been filling the brunt since November, when the Fed more clearly telegraphed its intentions to reduce liquidity in the financial system. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other major cryptos all are well off of their 52-week high and have shown a solid downtrend over the last few months as they priced in reduced stimulus and the potential for higher interest rates. Ladies and gentlemen, really quick, please, if your financial advisor or your guru or your crypto guy doesn't know about the 52-week moving average, fire them. Let's continue. Number four, the U.S. federal government. Debtors welcome low interest rates because they'll owe lower payments and there's no bigger borrower than the U.S. federal government. 
With the national debt at nearly 30 trillion, low rates remain a spur to refinance outstanding debt, offering the opportunity to save potentially billions of dollars if the government rolls over its debt. Of course, the government has benefited for decades from a secular decline in interest rates. While rates might rise cyclically during an economic boom, they've been moving steadily lower long term. For now, the interest rates on debt remain at attractive levels, with 10-year and 30-year treasuries running well below inflation. But eventually, the government will have to start refinancing its debt and higher at higher interest rates. Number five, savings accounts and CDs. Low interest rates mean that banks will offer low returns on their savings and money market accounts. CD rates saw a substantial decline after the Fed lowered rates in early 2020, and they've never really recovered. But change may be on the horizon. CD owners who locked in rates recently will retain those rates for the term of the CD, and those shopping for CDs may be able to still find relatively attractive deals if they search across the nation's best rates. Savings accounts have felt the brunt of lower rates, and most banks quickly ratcheted rates lower following the Fed's emergency cuts in March 2020. Still, there are a handful of banks that are offering substantially better rates than their peers, and with rates poised to rise in the near term, it can be worth starting to look for the highest rates again. Where you have your money parked will be really important as interest rates rise because many banks will be slow to pass along higher returns to savers, says McBride. Really quickly, for all those out there who are looking at those banks and they give you those attractive, oh, we're going to give you 2%, da 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 Understand, even if there's no minimum balance required and they say there's a zero balance required to attain the APR, what's a thousand percent on zero? It's zero. And... For those that say they're going to give you like a walloping 2%, that's on a minimum balance of a $10,000 daily balance that needs to remain there for at least one year. So you're not getting that interest unless you're a high net worth individual who's got at least $10,000 in that account. Most Americans don't even have access to $400 in the event of an emergency. So stop falling for the okie doke. You want to be where your money is wanted and they're willing to pay more to have it. Online savings accounts that are already paying a competitive yield will be the most likely to continue paying a competitive yield as interest rates rise. Savers looking to maximize their earnings from interest should turn to these online banks, where rates are typically much better than those offered by traditional banks. Number six, credit cards. Many variable rate credit cards change the rate they charge customers based on the prime rate which is closely related to the federal funds rate. The Fed's decision means that interest rates on variable rate cards is likely to remain flat, too, at least for now. If you have an outstanding balance on your cards, then a low rate is welcome news. However, it's important to keep the low rates in perspective because credit card rates are still among the costliest forms of financing for consumers, and rates look like they're poised to rise in the near term. Still, persistently low rates could be a welcome opportunity to find a new credit card with a lower rate. Low rates on credit cards are largely a non-issue if you're not running a balance. Bottom line, inflation has been running hot over much of the last year, and the Fed has been laying the groundwork for raising interest rates in the near term. But rates still do remain low by historical standards. So it makes sense to think about how to take advantage of potentially higher rates, whether that means getting a mortgage before before rates rise further or being more discriminating when it comes to shopping for rates on your savings accounts or CDs. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today's article. Make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth, to purchase life insurance directly up to $1 million with an instant decision and no medical exam, or to schedule a one-on-one appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description. With that being said, wipe ass, work in progress every day, and see success. Salute.
Hey folks, this last video was sponsored by my company where we help people like you to reach their financial goals. We do this through a simple conversation where we help to identify and then protect your lifestyle. And then we implement a plan. The process starts at about an hour. So if you want more information or you want to schedule a consult, contact me via the information in the description box. And let's talk and see if we're actually a great fit for each other. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, when people challenge you, they don't challenge you to challenge you, but they challenge you to challenge you. Accept the challenge. Thank you and enjoy life.